What's up guys, Cameron Foos here with FoosLurts.com. Just want to do a quick little video lesson. Uh, basically just kind of update on what uh, is going on with the current positions. Uh, you know, nothing really too exciting this week. We had a good day on Monday. Uh, it was about four grand. Uh, and then the last two sessions, you know, we've kind of just been pulling back in the market. Uh, looking at the Dow, you know, we've just been ripping it up here. We actually had the <clears throat> biggest sell-off of the month so far. Uh, and we are really down 25 points. Uh, so we've been just been completely ripping in July. Uh, and it's been an awesome month, but we're actually topping out here. You know, we're basically uh, potentially forming up a double top of the market. We could continue to hi go higher. We're still right in the 13 EMA, but definitely got to be cautious up here uh, for a market pullback. You know, we've just been ripping for about the last month straight. You know, what goes up does come down in the market. Uh, and we've just kind of seen that in the small cap area. Uh, this week, you know, nothing really has been uh, playing out that well. There has been stocks that are ripping, you know, such as FRO. This thing just exploded today. Uh, you know, gold stocks had that nice run. Unfortunately, I did not buy BAA, but I these were both on the or BAA, uh, GSS, BRD. You know, these were all on the watch list uh, as potential revival pattern breakouts, and they did finally break out. BAA was basically the breadwinner. Unfortunately, the only one I got into was GSS. Uh, and we actually sold here up at 55 cents today. Uh, we got in at 52 and a half, sold about 55 cents as it was hitting that 50 day, re 50 day moving average resistance as I was talking about here this morning in chat saying, hey, you know, we're at resistance. Uh, these stocks are pretty sketch. Let's just take this profit. I think I made about 500 uh, on GSS today. So locked in a, a small gain, nothing too crazy there uh, here on GSS, but you know, none of them really uh, made a huge move. As you can see, GLD kind of crapped out today after having that nice uh, run up. Nugget, I think, was down uh, huge. This is the uh, triple ETF. This was down 15% today. So uh, gold stocks got hit pretty hard today. As you can see, BAA uh, completely crapped out after that dollar roll this morning. and actually had a perfect F1 here right out of the gates this morning. Uh, if we look at the one minute chart on BAA, <clears throat> you know, we are sitting right at that dollar level basically had that nice little pop in the morning uh, over a dollar once that hit over 102 that just basically triggered that F1 breakout huge volume came in right on the break there uh, fortunately I did not try to scalp this uh, you know shoulda coulda woulda uh, shoulda coulda woulda situation uh, but <clears throat> you can't catch them all and that did just rip from 102 all the way up to 120 so that could have been a huge day trade scalp there on BAA just based off that tiny little F1 breakout pattern. So you gotta understand those patterns. If you haven't watched Foos 4 Part 2, definitely go check it out. It, you know, it's basically just F patterns all day long uh, for about seven hours me teaching that uh, strategy. But looking here at GSAT, this is kind of my, you know, my, my main position right now. Uh, it's obviously not working out, uh, you know, according to plan so far. It's a very sketch stock. Uh, you know, it's you know a low float penny stock, so anything can really happen. Uh, depending on if you're new to the uh, chat room or not, or if you've been around for a little bit. Remember, my first alert here was at 34 and a half cents on this revival pattern here, uh, way down here at 34 and a half. I made a quick about two grand off this, sold in the uh, mid 40s. Unfortunately, just did not have the patience to write out the 13 EMA here, which didn't break down until about 58 cents. So that was about a hundred percent gainer. Uh, in just about a month or so on my first buyer on G GSAT. Now we're in a force pattern potential breakout here uh, with a breakout zone at about 71 cents. It looks like we were ripping it here. Remember I added huge uh, into this. I was long 70,000 shares uh, into the close on this day here. We had that nice uh, spike on the uh, price action. Looking like we were potentially getting over these highs that were at 69 cents. 69.2 cents here and we've spiked up to 71 cents on the day and then yesterday I thought we we're gonna break out here we hit that 71 cent uh, resistance level once again and then sold off uh, and unfortunately I basically am back down to break even I gave back over three thousand dollars in profit you know the stock hasn't moved much at all but since my position was so large I was up you know with a nice gain and it just disappeared you know uh, just moving the stock uh, you know three percent or so so I'm now back to 50,000 shares. I sold uh, 20,000 for about a 600 something dollar gain just to ensure 
that uh, I locked in some gains and kind of gave myself a cushion if the stock did start pulling back towards the 13 EMA, which it did today. This thing pulled all the way back down to 63 cents, 63 and a half, which is at the 13 EMA. So hopefully we can see a rebound on GSAT, GSAT, and potentially rip back up uh, over these highs at 71 cents. But, you know, uh, as I was saying in my uh, Facebook post, I don't know if you saw it the other day, uh, just questions about stocks that people ask me like hey do you think this stock is gonna go up and you know I said I'm not a freaking psychic I have no idea what any given stock is gonna do at any given time uh, I'm not a psychic no one else knows either the only reason why I buy a stock is because it fits a certain criteria from there the stock either goes up or it goes down and I act accordingly so if the stock breaks out about 71 cents that's definitely going to be a potential, you know, push to the upside. If it breaks down below the 13 EMA, then I'll sell. It's not. Uh, I have an exact answer for this question. To that question, it's an open-ended uh, answer to that question. So GSAT, I have no idea what it's going to do. It either goes up or it goes down, and I'll act uh, depending on how it plays out. Uh, but that's GSAT. We wanted to break out above this level at about 70 cents or so or those highs at 71 to the upside, and that will be awesome. That's what we're looking for. Or it's gonna break down to the downside of the 13 EMA, and I have no problem selling this stock for a tiny loss. Uh, I really don't care what it does. Obviously, I wanna win, but you can't get married to a stock. If it doesn't work out, you just let it go and move on to the next one. Also checking out INO. This is one that has been on the watch list for uh, a while now, or about two or three weeks ago, I guess that was, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, when I ripped this for about ten thousand dollars in profits, when we uh, took this uh, first buy here down at eighty three cents, added more on the dollar roll, sold up here in the one fifties uh, for about ten grand in profits. Now we came back all the way down towards the thirteen EMA. You know, I was looking to get that thirteen EMA buy, uh, but just never quite got there for me to get in right where I wanted to. Uh, but then we started forming up this kind of survival pattern. We had the nice big run up to the upside, came back down, retested support areas. And now we kind of have this triangle that's been uh, forming up here on INO. As you can see, we got this kind of flag position going on here. And then we broke out above these recent highs here today and actually kind of came back down and retested those highs. I got in right out of the gates on the F1 uh, pattern here. See, we uh, opened right out of the gates, kind of hit 134 on the one minute chart and just we're kind of had a tight consolidation here, but we did have that big spike in volume right out of the gates. And then I triggered this right at 134, went long 10,000 shares, and we just ripped it all the way up about uh, almost 10 cents or 8 cents right there, uh, which put me up at about $800 very, very quickly right out of the gates. And then we kind of just uh, consolidated sideways, came all the way back down to my buy price at 134, which is a little sketch. Uh, you know, these stocks are so volatile, you can be up, you know, nearly a thousand bucks, and then 10 minutes later, you're back to break even. Uh, so F1 sometimes all there is is that first little initial spike, but we did close, you know, relatively strong at about 139, you know, not too far off a of highs today. It would have been nice to get an F3 breakout into the close of this intraday uh, pattern here, but we did not get that. Uh, hopefully we can see this hold above uh, this kind of triangle pattern and break out tomorrow. Uh, you know, goal here is to break out over 157 or, you know, sell at these previous highs. Uh, you know, that's kind of the goal of a survival pattern. First initial target of a survival is to buy into that breakout here, which was at about uh, 133. We got in at 134. The next resistance level to sell into is at about 157, which was previous highs. Uh, but a lot of times when see on the survival patterns, it'll break that previous high and just absolutely continue to rip it up. So uh, long term wise, you know, if we have patience, this could potentially rip to two dollars per share. This is also a gold pattern that we bought into uh, based on this breakout down here in the 80s. Uh, so a gold pattern typically a lot of times can definitely run up to a dollar per share or two dollars per share from the one dollar breakout. But having that patience to continue to hold is always, uh, you know, extremely difficult. Uh, you know, holding a stock that's you're up at 150 or something, then all of a sudden, next thing you know, uh, half your profit's gone, and then you're continuing to hold. So I just kind of, you know, trade in and out of that stock uh, or the gold pattern when I can, and try to make the most of it. So we're back here in INO. Hopefully, we can continue to hold it up. It basically needs to hold above 133, which was today's low. Uh, which is now uh, a support level. Hopefully we can have that flag again or just continue to rip tomorrow. Uh, it all really depends on the market. If the market continues to slide here, uh, which I won't, I don't really have uh, 
you know too much upside uh, outlook here. I'd, you know, if I had to make my best guess, of which I really don't know, trying to predict the general market is, you know, extremely difficult. Uh, but my best guess is that we kind of pull back from here. But we could be able to go to the upside. I really don't know. But if we do start falling to the downside, breakout charts are going to be much more difficult to trade. Obviously, uh, if you're trying to swing trade on the long side and the general market continues to fall. Uh, you know, your stocks are going to have a lot harder time uh, breaking out to the upside. Uh, I believe, let's see what else we got here. PRN, this is another one, a very, very low float stock. You know, I'm looking at the long term chart here. We got in yesterday uh, at the 270 ish level, I believe, now, or that was uh, intraday here. <clears throat> 273, I think I might have been my first buy. Now I'm averaged in 3,500 shares at about 280 ish. Uh, so I'm at a very small loss here basically I need to I need this to hold today's low uh, which is at 275 otherwise I'll probably sell it uh, it could easily drop below there you know this is a very low flow stock look what happened last time it made that spike next thing you know it was completely all the way back down but the longer term chart here we are in a force pattern that has continued to spike up towards three dollars per share uh, so if it can break out above this three dollar level uh, this could definitely see a huge run uh, so I'm in for, you know, not a huge position, but I'll take my chances here trying to get in uh, a pre-breakout on PRAN. And if this can rebound and potentially get back up towards three and break out, I'll probably add to this position uh, for the force pattern breakout as this could easily run from $3 to $4 per share if this start, uh, stock chart uh, actually does break out. If we continue to break down and start dropping below this 275 to 270 level, I'll probably just get out and then continue to watch it to see if it's gonna break out above that three level. But anyways, that's about it for the current positions right now. Uh, nothing too exciting going on the last couple of days, but hopefully we can see some nice profits coming into uh, the rest of the week. All right, guys, uh, see you tomorrow bright and early on Foos TV.